it, it sort of reminds me of what the, of what um, con- Capcom did with uh, Mega Man Battle Network Four, and Riley will probably know what I'm talking about. Because in Battle Network Four, essentially what happens is after you beat the the game and you, get, and you pretty much beat the main boss. The game gives you the option to either A, continue off where you beat the boss, or you just continuously beat the boss as much as you want, oh, 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 oh. or... It missed! Are you fucking serious? God, these missiles are ADD as fuck! Sorry, go on, go on, my bad. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine. But anyway, after, or, and this is the big or, you play the game all over again, losing key items, but somehow still keeping your health and all the, the attack moves you have, just so you can go through the game three times and beat the the, uh, the different level monsters just so you can get the best ending, or the secret area of the game. In comparison to everything else beforehand, where all you had to do was just beat the boss, and then after that, go to where the secret area was implied to be in the game, and then just simply go from there. The fourth one just simply said, no, fuck you, play the game three times. Yeah, that, yeah think, that's pretty I much think player it goes, one. I think it goes without saying that if you're going to fuck people about just to get them to play your game multiple times, fuck you. You know what game sh- does does multiple playthroughs really, really well? What? what? Near Automata. Yeah. But that's because Platinum is Platinum makes games that are for like fucking crazy action people who actually care about the story but also like to see some thick thickums. Die bitch. And <laughs> big booba. Uh, like, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it's like I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm interested in the automata for any reason <clears> other than to be because that would make me a liar. I'm lying. not gonna sit here and pretend I play Bayonetta for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's like full transparency, unambiguously. Neo Automata is interesting to me because the robot has is like the robot's ass has 300 plus polygons, <laughs> more polygons fact. than the rest of the model combined without it. That's that's a fact. That is 100 percent true, and I love it. <laughs> that you know. It. And I love how the creator is just no nonsense. People bitch about it. And he's just like, "Can you fuck off? Nobody cares, or nobody who matters cares." <laughs> also, I also love when he fucking rolled around on the floor and screamed, "Fuck you, Square Enix!" <laughs> oh my god. Um, I was also about to, I was about to mention, <clears throat> considering oh. what you've told me about um about Blair Witch, it's, again, it shows me that some people just don't know much on how to execute the fucking franchise of Blair Witch, because we had that, we, I now know that about the game, and then there's the movie that even though I like it, it's incredibly fucking flawed. Yeah. <clears throat> Good God, the fucking movie was insult, was frustrating. Yeah. Blair Witch don't Blair Witch Blair Witch has a has a weird lightning in a bottle effect. Yeah, like the first movie. I know some people tend to be very critical about it, but I personally like it. I think it's actually one of the more better found footage movies out there. Oh, it was but a genre it's, definer. It's a yeah, it's a genre definer. But then it feels like any attempts that they tried to do to continue it afterwards were met with different results. Yeah, I never. I never bothered with Blair Witch 2, but I've heard, but I've seen reviews about how terrible it is. No, I've seen you, know it. What's, you know what's really sad? <laughs> what's what? that? Like, I hear a lot of people talk about this, and I never want to believe it because I like to think that any franchise or any piece of media has the potential to go the distance. Mm-hmm. But I'm starting to think that when people talk about like franchise fatigue and how some really good stuff should just stop after the first entry. That's like, stupid. No, it's like, I'm just sitting there thinking, maybe they're right sometimes. In regards to which like... one? <coughs> give... it... I can Sorry. give a... I can give a number one with a bullet uh, example to that. Which one? Yeah. It's fucking Star Trek. Oh, really? Yes, because, like, a lot of them are hit... Like, okay, original Star Trek great for its time looking back on it yeah, it's a bit yeah, yeah gay people were solved 
like they were a problem. But the world was a better place because of universal communism. Um, <laughs> but their uh, their depiction of the half white, half black people and their internal conflicts was a little too on the nose, bordering on like beating you over the head with a racism bad baseball bat in the in the wrong way. Kind of. Here's how I equate that episode to. Um, that's the televised equivalent of the entire experience of Detroit Become Human. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Like, that episode is like the televised version of just playing through Detroit Become Human. <laughs> because it's a, it's the heavy-handed, okay, Babe Ruth stepping up to the plate, your head is the ball, he's gonna swing for the fences, racism <clears throat> bad. Like... Wait, mm. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it is, but at the same time, like, do, do you have anything to tell me in the story that isn't that? Like, nope, I could tell you, is. like, I could tell you that for three. I certainly don't want you to spend sixty dollars for me to tell you that racism is bad. <laughs> and then there's also the episode where there was this. There's no, it's Deep Space Nine, I think, is where they uh really focus on them, a race of aliens that ah! are like very materialistic, but also, and this is like a, a footnote that not a lot of people talk about, but uh, for the longest time, they didn't allow their women to wear clothes. Ow! Jesus. I'm a fucking yeah. sitting duck having sorry, to do I this. Think I, I think I just had a stroke. What? Yeah. But, but they but also, why, they were very materialistic, very focused on monetary gain and self-serving. They had big old ears. And, uh... Yeah, it was kind of a, it was kind of a, it was, yeah, it was a, it was a time, it was a, it was a, wrong, I can feel it. It's kind of like looking at the, uh, the Gungans from Star Wars, like looking back and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> hi, Misty. I, I, I could tell from a mile off that the Gungans were meant to represent Ow! something very Jesus. specific. You're like, watch your oh, fucking missile. Wait. But it was actually uh, I. Ah! Who keeps oh, hitting me? <laughs> okay, who? Been bamboozled. Been, been fucking bangy boozled right here. All right. In a state. No, there he is. Hiya, Ed. How you doing? I'm a doodly. That's good. Computer. That's ex excellent. Wonderful. You know, I like you do. Oh, great. You're... Commandeering the computer like an inquisitor commandeers ships. I have been playing a fuck ton of chaos <laughs> of fucking Demon Hunter. There. Over 40k. Now, I back to where I was. It. I love it. Ah, uh, yes, you have started the trek onto the 40k. You will never go back from it. Oh man, I've been on the trek for like five years now. <laughs> Oh, well, then it like, depends on how much you really actually like it. Whoa, oh, dude, shit, I'm going too fast. What? I will like... tell you, I will tell you right now, my favorite Space Marine chapter of all is the Night Lords, because Corvus Cor... Or no, what's his name? Corvus, Cor Corvus Corax was the chapter master, uh, well, no, was the Primarch of the... Primarch of the... Uh, yeah. What the, Ow! What Jesus. the fuck is his name? Oh, God damn it! what's his name? I just, I was just talking about him earlier to a friend. Ugh. Conrad Kurz. Conrad Kurz, yes. Yeah, Conrad Kurz. If you imagine emo Batman, who was also a vampire. And oh, yeah. He's there. there. Conrad the emo Kurz Batman, is the greatest who is also example. A Conrad Kurz is the greatest example of... Fuck, please, someone help me. I am suffering from the debilitating mental illness, and Rogaldor just walks up and goes, You crying, you little bitch? I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> Conrad's like, Dad, Dad, please help. And you know, is like, sorry, for uh, the, sorry for the interruption. With all this talk about Star Trek... Star Trek. I was talking no, no, about we, Star Trek. We were talking about Star here. Trek before you dropped in. Yeah, oh. Don't worry, he's not the... He, <laughs> He's. I'm. I'm a little more focused on the game. I'm sorry. No, no it's okay. Oh, wait, Hank, actually thinking about it, I know a good way in how we can combine Star Trek and 40k together. Oh, God. 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 
<clears throat> um, Listen, God. Jagatai Khan is one of the most badass motherfuckers because the, the entire time since the fall of, since I'm gonna say fall of the Imperium and like happened with the Emperor getting turned into a Skelly Man, he just went, mm, I'm going for some Drakari booty, <laughs> and then jumped in the webway and hasn't come out yet. Because Jagatai Khan moves at Mach 5, like the rest of his white scars, if he stops moving for five seconds, he'll just explode. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it! Oh, he's abusing his goddamn chaff. Since I have a chance to talk, to, to speak with you, Ed, uh, you, did you see the video game awards? I did not. Did you see the news of... Space Marine you are like William you I mean, that's the idea. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you see the news for Space Marine 2? I have and my Shut up, Volk. So, what do you think the secondary antagonist is going to be? We've got Tyranids. My bet is Necrons. <sighs> Not Necrons and Nids. They don't normally clash. That was mine, Volk. Piece of shit. How, <laughs> how great would it be if... <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I just thought of the greatest thing, dude. What? Okay, okay, okay. So, there the Necrons in Warhammer little little overview. The Necrons in Warhammer 40K are basically like skeleton, like robot skeletons that range from we want to rip your flesh off and wear it to kill all organics to oh god, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically um Every single emotion you can ever think of, but we'll give them to a Terminator. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> how great would it be if during this invasion, Captain Fucking. Titus, Lieutenant Titus, is just run around killing nids, right? Mm. And then he hears somebody, like, he hears a shout off to his right, and he looks over, and one of his primary Space Marine buddies is just standing there, like, locked in place, and you see, like, five feet behind him just trazing the in Damn it. standing there like, Ah, yes, another for my collection. <laughs> Hello. God, if Trazen was in there, you are I'm correct, gonna point sir. out that oh. if Gordon's doing all of this, he has got a fucking clue what 40k is. What 40k, 40K is? is Warhammer yeah. 40k, one of the greatest sci-fi universes ever created. Oh, oh speaking of 40 uh, Warhammer 40k, did you guys see they're making a boomer shooter of it? Yeah. They're yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're basically making the original Doom 40k one. Yeah. It's gonna be fantastic. In all its, in all its what, 16 uh, 16 bit glory or 32 bit glory, whatever the fuck it was. Is it even it's gonna 16 bits. It looks like six bits. It's gonna be great, regardless. <laughs> So, Golden, just to help you out of the context, you know whenever you hear people like Vlad or Solo going, BROTHER! Yeah. It's that. What happened before you yeah. cares where that came from. Yes. Hmm. Okay. For the Emperor. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, oddly enough, there are a lot of people in the Brony fandom who are obsessed with 40k, and it's kind of disturbing how many people there are that like it. Because well, honestly, yeah. they, need, they need to balance out all the Technicolor diabetes. Like, even the most wholesome Christians in the fandom that I know are into Warhammer 40k. And that's saying something. Because you can look say, at Warhammer 40k and go, haha, religion. <laughs> I was gonna say, the first people I ever met in this fandom that were obsessed with, were obsessed with it, like, I know Solar liked it, I know Tricky Fox liked it, I know FNGR liked it, and then I've just met more people along the way who just, uh, love it. Uh, I think Jordan, uh, Lego Comics <laughs> likes it too. Jordan Lego Comics? Uh, I think that would be Brick Brony. Oh, yeah. Brixton. I don't know who that is. I'm, I'm You're not missing much. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not going to say anything really about him. Yeah. Okay, like, he's not the worst thing ever. Like, he's not British Brony, if anybody remembers oh him. God. Oh, oh, my God. God. Uh, that still reminds me of BronyCon 2017 when Ninja met Anthony C. Oh uh, no! Yeah, Anthony say he like walks up to him and he's and he's like, "You're British," and then and like you can see the smile on his face as and then he goes, "Brony, right?" And oh, goes, oh, that's an instant frown. I can imagine, Jesus. What I heard, the amount of devastation on his face when he heard that. 
Oh my god, poor ninja, dude. Oh my okay, god. I could just imagine Ninja just like fading in the background. It's just going, How could this happen to me? <laughs> it's like one of those it's like one of those videos of the dude screaming and then immediately like evaporating. Just ah Also, Derek the Brony, to clarify, British Brony was a different person compared to British Ninja. Yeah, Brit yeah British Brony was one of the worst YouTube analysts, like Did you Brony. I look. I mispronounce no, things sometimes. Fuck you. No, no, I, no, I do. I do. Guys, guys, let logic talk. I, I do have to interject and say you did pronounce it correctly. I genuinely don't know where that came from. <laughs> like I, I heard British Brony. Yeah. Anyways, no British Brony. He's a uh, he, he's a can of worms. Um, I've had some, uh, ridiculous stories from him, and Bliss had it worse. Oh, oh dear. There are certain allegations that we probably shall not get into. Yeah. Oh, no. The dude, the dude just became an analyst because he wanted to become a part of the Cool Kids Club. Uh, uh, yeah. I did an analysis because I just wanted to screw. I became an analyst because I wanted to scream my opinions at people. Good. I, I became an analyst because I wanted to scream my opinions at people, and I was like gunning for somebody to fucking debate me. <laughs> actually, I have um. Actually, I have a question uh, from earlier. Sorry for the interruption, uh, Vlad. You said you don't like uh, degeneration and damnation of the uh, Resident Evil CG movies. So, if you had to pick, would you rather watch those? Or the shitty Paul W. S. Anderson movies that follow nothing to the games. The CGI movies every time. <laughs> oh, no hesitation I at all. Um, yeah. I, I have had to sit through watching those fucking movies for not one, not two, but three separate charity events. Oh no! They were charity events. Why? Because a friend of mine's fucking audience is a fucking masochist because they like to hear me scream. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty funny. I mean, it is. Dude, like, I could imagine that one of those kind of scenarios, like, okay, some people can vouch for me on this. Um, because, like, okay, regarding MLP, I fucking hate the Spike Anthem scene from Equestria Games. It was one of the most embarrassing moments in the show and that wasn't until newbie dash when dash was trying to act like her friends but no god newbie dash yeah newbie dash is worst episode of the show <laughs> I, anyways I, I cringe every time the impressions come on but no like okay so back when i was um it several years ago i went to pacific pony con which was a con held in san diego and there was a, a karaoke event you know for children and everything like that um, and you hear some, like, some brony songs in the background, and some people join in for, like, karaoke songs. Like, they'll play Smile, 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 or A True, True Friend Helps a Friend, Indy. Anyways, at one point, I literally hear the Spike song play, and no hesitation at all, I grab my bags, and I just run out of the room in, like, two seconds. I'm like, fuck that, I am out. Yeah, and I'm just like, nope, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> as soon as I come back... Bliss is laughing her ass off. She's like, are you sure you're not an Earth Pony? Because, damn, you ran fast. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that that part would make it any better is like if at one point you just saw a rendition of Bane in the corner just going like, that's a lovely, lovely voice. <laughs> <laughs> that's something I, I've heard in a while. <laughs> I... I... I'm I am sitting... burned. Sitting through all of the Resident Evil movies by Paul W.S. Anderson is a pain that I would not wish on my worst fucking enemies. Oh yeah, no, like, at some point I've had thoughts about reviewing the first movie and just tearing it apart. Because, like, I also nickname it Not Resident Evil because they're not! They don't follow anything to the games. I don't know how they would classify as an adaptation if you don't bring anything from the game into the movie other than zombies. And a few named characters, like, they... they... They did my man Barry Burton dirty. They did everybody dirty. Like, Jill Valentine 
was supposed to be like the badass saving a girl. Like she was like lighting up a. Uh, she attempted to light a gas tank behind her while rescuing the girl, but the light goes out. Uh, the match goes out in favor of Alice, who's fucking smoking his cigarette. It's got like some kind of metal cloth to do the job for what Jill was supposed to do. Like kiss my ass, Paul. Like, are you fucking serious? Yeah, guys, we need a special super soldier lady. Who, the Mary who Sue lady. Superpowers. No, she's a goddamn Mary Sue. Okay, so everybody says in the Star Wars movies that Ray's a Mary Sue and everything, and I'm not going to defend Ray by any means, but compared to Alice, she's nothing. Mm. Alice is a bigger Mary Sue than anything else because there is no emotion or any investment I get off of Alice, period. It's just, it's it's moves. Paul. It's just Paul making a circle jerk for his wife. He's going, guys. Yep. Look how hot this woman is. I can sex her. I get to sex her, but only when she wants it. I just it. want to say, Ed, to answer your question about like why people think that Ray is a Mary Sue, like I personally am, am indifferent to it. I think all of is like, well, I think the movies are bad. I think all of the cast members played the roles they were given very well, but. Fucking the big problem with Ray, at least for me, so I'm gonna assume that's the problem a lot of other people like me have, is that like she kind of just gets to be better than everyone who came before her, but you don't really get to see her earn that. No, okay, the problem is is that the writers rushed her character. Like there was no moment where she would develop how to work with the force. The the force just works in her favor, or how to navigate the Millennium right. Falcon. Is like fucking, and then it will always, the scene where it's just like I'm Ray Skywalker will always bother me because it's just like you didn't earn that name, you don't even know what it means. And you know what it would have worked when, 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 when you get married, when you get married, you'll change your name anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, just, just like,